Where have all the men gone? That sounds a bit odd when I ask that. Where, where has manhood gone? Uh, well, let's ask Betsy Hart, who is a writer and a broadcaster, a frequent guest on CNN and Fox News. She's in Chicago, a great city. Now, welcome to you. Merry Christmas. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Merry Christmas to you, too. I'm delighted we can actually say Merry Christmas instead of Happy Holidays or some other euphemism. So, oh, Merry it's, Christmas it's compulsory you. here. We actually, we, we've got a, a place outside where we shoot people who, who don't say it. Now, uh, is, is this true? Has there been an emasculation of greater society? Is manhood under threat? I think it is under threat, Michael, and there's a couple of uh, couple of big hints to that, not least of all something a lot of people, at least here in the States, are talking about. But you can get some strong hints of it just by watching television. If you look at not only commercials, but sitcoms, dramas, husbands and fathers are always complete idiots who have to be saved from the day by their ever more intelligent and competent wives and children. And that's just one example of sort of the dumbing down of manhood we have, where it's sort of this, what I've come to call the man bad, woman good view of the world. And it's really unfortunate because then we find a whole lot of guys are, are playing Xbox in their parents' basements at the age of 26 and 27 instead of growing up and starting families. And it becomes this uh, very difficult catch 22. It's very true, I have to say, and I don't have any particular agenda in terms of men's <laughs> issues, but for years now on TV, the father is sometimes a, a nice, kind figure, but he's bumbling and he gets it yes. wrong. And it's always the, the, the mother who says, unless he's a single father, which hardly ever happens, but the single fathers, they're okay, but otherwise he's a bit of a clown, isn't he? Yes, and even then, he sort of needs the women from the neighborhood to show him how to raise his children That's and right. so on. Yes, and then when you do see the more masculine qualities portrayed, it's very often in a very negative way. I mean, he's, he's too competitive, and certainly he doesn't share his feelings enough. And we all have seen the shows, right, where you have these talk shows and the women are talking about their horrific boyfriends who, who aren't sensitive enough and don't care about their feelings and, oh, those awful brutes. But if those brutes were coming on and talking about their wives and saying, you know what, she's just not having enough sex with me, well, we can't have that discussion, or she's too sensitive, or she's too emotional, well, that's off the table. Everybody has to look one way more and more culturally, and more and more, you have to look like a girl. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so unfortunate we're feminizing men instead of civilizing them, which has historically been the role that women have played. Now we just kind of want to make men into our best girlfriends and i think it's very destructive for culture and family uh, now th this is good i'm not going to talk about the she's not having enough sex with me because my wife m might be watching <laughs> and, and it really will be a problem but uh the, the idea of, of of looking like a woman now it's one thing to to, to be groomed uh, to make sure that you don't smell bad you know i mean i i, I yeah. put on colognes and stuff like that and but there there has, has been this tendency to almost blur the the genders where, where men I don't mean they walk around saying, look at me, we're holding their muscles up, but they have become effete. Yeah, we, we definitely have gotten into this sort of, this melding, if you will, this homogenized look that I think is not necessarily uh, particularly attractive. I tend to like manly looking men. But maybe that's just a signal of some other things that are going on in the culture when we really are, are sort of not valuing the more traditionally masculine qualities. And there's some reasons for that that don't have to do with feminism. I mean, we do have a, a economy now that really is uh, beneficial to multitasking. It's more service-oriented. We don't physically need the brawn that perhaps we once did. Women are excelling in high schools and colleges, at least here in the United States. There's this phenomenon of the super girl and all kinds of... Uh, questions about where are the guys on college campuses because it's the women who are applying more getting in more and then doing better once they get there mm. and the women tend to now in most major cities in the united states on average young women are making more than their male counterparts and on it goes so some of this has to do with economics some of it has to do with a very feminist agenda that says the traditional male qualities of being competitive, of being a little more stoic, not always being so verbal, et cetera, are bad qualities. Mm. Instead of what we once understood, which is that men and women typically are different, and that's a good thing. We complement each other. Less and less today, I think we're accepting of that. That has implication for families and communities and children. And and a lot of women who are single because they can't find good guys to marry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's also the, the, the notion of sacrifice. I, mm -hmm. It sounds archaic now, but if a ship was sinking, women and children first, which one right. feminist in this country said uh, she thought was akin to, to, to hate speech, which is quite... Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, now if you were on the Titanic, there wouldn't be that chivalry. There would be everybody for himself, right? And one of the reasons that's important, Michael, is because we used to understand that men are typically physically stronger and more aggressive. They have all that testosterone. Yep. They can either channel it for good when it comes to women, caring for women, caring for children, providing for a family, or they can channel it for ill. And that's why the vast majority of men, of people in prisons are men, and they're single men because they've not channeled their aggressiveness rightly in a way that's helpful for society and for the culture and for the community. They've channeled it destructively. Well, now we have a lot of guys who just aren't channeling it at all, and we have a huge proportion. Uh, the latest check was around 25% of people in their mid-20s are living in their parents' basements. Most of those are men. They're much more likely to be living at home than women. And so then women are excelling in the world, and they're turning around and wondering about where all the good guys are. I think there's a lot of well, there's a lot of ways women play into this, and one of them, no doubt, is that women have become so sexually available outside of marriage, there's not as much reason anymore for guys to get married and have families. So that's another way that feminism, while it's done some good things, has really led to a whole lot of women in their 40s looking around and saying, where have all the good guys gone? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I, there's probably not a man uh, over the age of, of, of 35 who hasn't come across attractive, lovely, uh, bright women in their 40s who say, I can't find a guy. I mean, that, that's absolutely yeah. true. I mean, l there are legal consequences, too. There is now an assumption within the legal system in Canada, I think the U.S. is the same, that when it comes to a, a custody dispute or, or a separation, the father, I mean, I think invariably the, the mother probably should have custody, but the father is barely to be considered. If there's violence in the home, even if they've hit each other, it's the man who has to be punished. I think that's part of the consequence of this, isn't it? Yes, we do see, and it, it is reflected, I think, a lot in our court system, a, a presumption of guilt on the part of men when it comes to pretty much anything, I mean, yeah. when it comes to relationships. It's, it seems more and more, it's always the fellow who wasn't listening. It's always the fellow who wasn't communicating, and, and on and on it goes. And in the court systems, I mean, you can hear horror stories on both sides, that women have really taken advantage of this. Um, other times you see men, when their wives walk out the door, uh, being left very much holding the shaft. I mean, yeah. I'd personally love to go back to a fault-based divorce system in our courts so that you really do have to show who was more at fault in leaving the marriage and let the money and the children kind of follow the, the better parent, if you will. I don't think we're ever going to go back to that. Yeah. But nonetheless, what we do need to do and the way to get around this or to start changing things, and I'm, I'm working on a book on this very topic, is to encourage women, um, I think it starts there, to value traditionally male qualities in men and to value themselves a little more in their feminine qualities and, and not suggest that we have to sort of merge into one being, but that we do as different genders have a lot to offer. Yeah. We have a lot to offer the home okay. and the family and we need to sign and kind of re be rebuilding okay. respect for that. All right. I'm going to be a man here and say, you've got to be quiet now because we've got... It's, it's a real pleasure. <laughs> Love to have you back on the show. That, that, that was terrific. Great. And again, have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks so much. Merry Christmas to you too, Michael.